Hey guys, it is Saturday afternoon here in the Philippines, so it is time for us to do our weekend showcase video. And as promised, we are doing low riders. As you can see in front of you, we have a bunch of them to take a look at. Some new releases, some older releases, and uh, from multiple different brands. So, I'm here to show you like which ones are available at the moment that should be reasonably easy to find and some of them that are going to be kind of tough to find so anyways let's go ahead and get started uh over here on the side this is the first one that we have from green light and actually if you have not heard yet green light is launching a lowrider series they're releasing a four-door 70s cadillac like four-door hardtop, not the post model, and they're releasing a 64 Chevy, and one of the cars in their lowrider series is to uh, represent Gypsy Rose, the most iconic um, lowrider of all time. So that should be a cool series. I have not seen the final prototype of their Impala yet, but it should be interesting to see. I think they're doing a 63 and a 64 Chevy Impala and that Cadillac. And then they're also putting some of their four-door 80s uh, Caprices in the lowrider mix. I didn't see where they're putting a Monte Carlo in the mix, though. They should do that because they have the chaos stains. Um, anyways, the Dayton Wire spoke, so I hope they do a better job on it. As you can see on this one... These look good if you were trying to represent like a 15-inch standard offset wire spoke wheel with regular profile white wall tires. Well, Jesse Pinkman's car in Breaking Bad had like 13-inch or 14-inch reverse offset wire spokes. So these should look like the ones that Ravel uses or like Hot Wheels uses on their low riders. But they don't. They, they look like your standard issue, like, I don't know, stock Cadillac 15-inch wires from the 70s. But it's still yet not bad. The casting overall is gorgeous, though, because most people always try to represent the SS. There's so many SSs out there, but not enough LSs or just regular standard Monte Carlos. Well, they did it with their first casting of the Monte to represent the 82 that Jesse Pinkman had. And this looks great very happy to see a regular casting just like matchbox launched the 88 ls with the euro front end that is another nice looking casting i have not got one of them yet but the picks look great as i said nice to see people launching the regular monies and not always just the ss not that i'm a hater on the ss definitely love them i've owned a couple of them they're great cars but it's just nice to have a diversity in your collection with regular ones, SSs, and so forth. So not a bad casting. This one's relatively easy to find. They've actually released it twice, so um, you shouldn't have a hard time finding it. Now, the next one is from Johnny Lightning. Back in the early 2000s, Johnny Lightning did a lowrider series, too. And their cars were okay. They had this Oldsmobile, which this is the only company that represents the Oldsmobile correctly. Uh, this one in particular, the wire spokes are a little bit too small in diameter, but still, they were trying their best. The car overall, the body, if you can imagine it without the wheels and just the body, is perfect. The proportions, the body lines are excellent for the 84 Olds Cutlass. Um, they make a beautiful 84 Herstals. The scaling is a, a little small, not a, a whole lot, but a little bit. So um, that's the downside of it. The only other company to make an 80s G-Body Cutlass is Hot Wheels. And theirs is a little cartoonish, as most Hot Wheels are. They're kids' toys. So, of course, they're going to look that way with exaggerated, you know, wheel openings, body lines, and such things like that. Um, so, anyways, this is a beautiful car. It's just, it does represent the lowrider culture with the paint job and things like that. Candy paint, the wild graphics and such. The wheels could have used to have been a little bit bigger, but still not bad. These are really hard to find nowadays because this is from the early 2000s, not the latest releases from Johnny Lightning after round two bought them. Next one is from Racing Champions. This is a newer release, Racing Champions, which you should be able to find relatively easy, but it did not come with these wire spokes. These wire spokes are from Ravel. They came off of one of their like 30 Chevy bombs, the two-door or four-door 
big sedan. Not really into those, so I used it as a will donor for my 64 Chevy. And I couldn't find a 64 Chevy from Ravel. I would have preferred that, but couldn't find any here. So the racing champions will have to do for now. I'm not a fan of the casting because of this insert they do in the front that makes up part of the front fenders. A lot of times they don't even paint the side of it. They leave it chrome and it looks horrible because the 64 Chevy actually had one piece fender, no end caps on the fenders, and the grill kind of set flush or actually a little bit um, recessed in the uh, front fenders. So, but you know, from a distance in the display, it doesn't look bad. And the wires are not on there too good. The front axle rolls pretty good, but as you can see, I had to cut down the hubs on the back side to get it to fit on the back. So that's kind of just there for display purposes only. But not a bad casting. It's true to scale, so that's one thing good about it. The next one is a rarer one. This is from Muscle Machines, actually, from the Jesse James series. And they did... The regular, like, turquoise or mint green, whatever you want to call it, that bluish green color that his originally was. And then they did this gold release with the wire spokes. And it does have some cool detail. If you could see inside the back, the pumps for the hydraulics are there. And the paint job's really cool. Chassis detail's beautiful. Metal, metal casting. And it does have working suspension. Um... We'll try to get this into perspective for you guys and see it's down low. And if you push down, eh, there you go. So now it's up. So not a, a lot to it, but it does adjust. It does go up and go down. So as you can see, he is, uh, let me move the three wheel and Monty and we'll put him over here so you can see it a little better. So as you can see, that's what it would be up and then there it is down so not a huge difference but like maybe two or three inches if it was a one-to-one -one car so pretty cool um these are harder to find nowadays uh not sure like how hard i haven't really looked for one but it is cool detail opening hood with the inline six so pretty cool at representing just a stock two-door wagon excuse me uh businessman like or handyman they called them uh wagon and then next would be something to represent the Japan lowrider culture. This is their Skyline van, but as you can see, the low profile deep dish wheels. Um, this is something that we did back in like the late 80s, early 90s. We would run these low pros with these deep dish wheels, like reverse offset, like 15 by 10s or 14 by 10s, uh, usually KMC type wheels on G bodies and such. That's what that reminds me of is like our fad back in the late 80s and early 90s in America for like kind of our first like type low riders then came in the early 90s when hip-hop music started using the low riders in their videos then that's what grabbed America's attention with the low riding culture where it became like a trend but as you can see this is the Datsun uh, I forget what this is, Sunny or something like that. Yeah, Datsun Sunny truck. These are really small, and they're made like an El Camino, where everything is one piece. The bed's not separate from the body. Um, really cool-looking little truck. It does represent low-riding culture. Uh, same thing with this wagon, the way it's slammed with these low pros. So that's why I brought those out, to kind of show you a little bit of, like, the Japan low-riding, like, look. So pretty cool. Love these wagons too. Looks really cool. Now the next two I got are Super Treasure Hunts from Hot Wheels. And this is the only time, actually they did this car twice. This is the first one. This is a 64 Riv and this is actually the first casting. There's actually a second casting of the 64 Riv that was released in the Boulevard series that's more accurate than this. More stock too. This one's actually chopped and has a lot of customized being done to it um, but they did a great job like representing an old school lowrider from like the 70s the wheels these are my favorite wheels from hot wheels the five spokes but these kind of do a good job at representing like the old supremes uh that they would use in the 70s 
So really cool pattern style candy paint job, like a candy magenta with some candy purples and lavenders and such. So they did a heck of a job. They released this again in 2013 in purple, and it had the 10 spoke style wheels on it, uh, which looked okay. Not a bad looking car, but I do prefer this one. This one is really nicely done. Uh, so second uh, low rider uh, was this guy. This came out in 2011. There's actually a regular treasure hunt. This is the last year they had regular and super versions of the treasure hunts. And this one just looks killer. The old boat tail style rib with all the gold trim, the gold like Supreme style wheels with the white wall tires. This thing just screams low rider. Um, looks really, really good. So one of my favorite supers actually love this car. So they did a heck of a job. Now those are a little harder to find because they're super treasure hunt. So you're going to pay a premium for them. Uh, next one though is easy to find. Uh, this is a newer release from Auto World Miho. Auto World took their 76 Cadillac and added some low rider trim to it. The paint job and then the little diameter wheels and the little low profile tires. Looks really good. They have the Cadillac uh, also with gold trim. Uh, did not find that one here. Only found this one with the chrome trim. They've taken all of their popular Impalas, Caddies, and stuff and made them into lowriders with Miho. Only downside, no adjustable suspension, but still just sitting there in a display, they do look great. Um, and then nobody uh, compares to Auto World with like certain castings, and this is one of them. Nobody else even offers this casting, this big, huge land yacht. So nice vehicle and as i said still accessible and then the ones in the middle here these are all from ravel i kind of set it up for looking like they're doing their hopping contest and what's cool if you have any of the johnny lightning showstoppers or will standers that's where these things came from and i just put those under it for display purposes and they work great for making the car look like they're hopping. But as you can see, the Ravels have this awesome adjustable suspension. So, and then they also usually have opening trunks that have detailed batteries and pumps, but these are really hard to find nowadays. And when you do find them, they're usually not cheap, no matter what model they have. They do have some really cool ones too. They have G-Body Regals. Um, they have the 70s Cadillac, uh, like 78 to 87 style Caddy. And if you work with the suspension, but be careful, you can get it to set in three wheel motion by cocking the axle and getting it to click in. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes not all of them want to do it. And as I said, don't force them because it is just like a U shaped thing with a little metal bar in it. Then it will break very easily. So that's what happened to this Mani here. This Mani is one that doesn't have the opening deck lid. They had a keychain series and they were model kits that came and they were keychains and the trunk was sealed uh, shut. But somebody, the past owner, tried to force it and as you can see it broke. So that's why... Only the rear hydraulics work on this one, and it's very nice, but it's only for display purposes only. So I just set that front axle in there like so, and then that's all she's good for. But the, the keychain series did not have opening deck lids, but all the regular series did. And then here is Ravel's rendition on the 71 Boatel Riv, and adjustable suspension. The only thing I don't like is when it's slammed all the way down, the rear axle sets back too far. All of them were that way. They didn't line it up too good, but still not bad. Uh, and then opening deck lid, even on the boat tail with the pumps and the batteries. And Hot Wheels was very, very close to being true to scale because the Ravels are supposedly being true to scale. Hot Wheels did a heck of a job on their 71 Riv being true to scale. Sometimes Hot Wheels is a little oversized or a little bit too small. Now, to speed things up a little bit, these ones in the back, the 65 Chevys, I'll just do one color. 
This comes in purple, comes in orange. This is also from Auto World Miho, one of the latest ones. Very cool, still available, easy to get. Um, then the 62 Chevy, also, this is both versions, and I'll bring it up because the purple and orange 66s, I should say, not 65s, they're j the same, just different paint colors. Now, these guys are a little different. This has all gold, this has all chrome. So, that's to give you a look at, like, what the all gold looks like. Like I said, there's a Cadillac, the 76, that's done up the same way. So, then you have your Chase variants, which are really cool, because they are a little bit different, not like all the other auto world, like Ultra Reds. Usually, one Ultra Red serves the purpose of version A and version B, but not with the Miho exclusives. Every version has its own Ultra Red, which is cool. So, the only thing, though, is the green one that should have all chrome actually has all gold. So, some stuff does cross over, but you do have the differences. As the green one has the side stripe, the black one doesn't. And then even with your hood pinstriping, it's different for the black versus the green. So, pretty cool. And... Those are a little bit hard to find and expensive because they're the chase variants, the candy red ones, the ultra red, I should say. The black and green ones are not so hard to find. Um, now, moving along to the back row. This is something that low riding, I don't know, I don't even know if I would call it low riding, but when people started building the donks, the six, late 60s, the 70s, Impalas and Caprices, predominantly like the 70 to 76, um, and lifted them and put these huge 26-inch wheels on them. It still, I guess, was supposedly going to represent something to do with low-riding car culture, but uh, kind of strange because the cars are lifted. Um, these are from Motor Max. These are extremely hard to find nowadays. I remember when they were peg warmers, but now they're very desirable and they go for big money. Um, this They did release them with regular standard like suspension, uh, which would be this guy here. Now, this is a body swap, though. This is one of the donks. As you can see, high razors, and it does not a high razor. But I took the base from one of the American Graffiti ones that had bad paint, and I slapped on this guy. The wheels and tires are from Hot Wheels. These are the 10-spoke wheels. This is what would have been on the other R Riviera uh, Super Treasure Hunt from 2013. But anyways, looks really good, slammed. But these castings are extremely desirable. Now, this one here is actually an American Graffiti body on... Actually, the paint wasn't bad on that one. It was the Caprice, I think, I had. So this actually is still good. I just swapped the bases. Um, because this is the American Graffiti Series Orange 71 Impala. But I put it on the High Rakers chassis so I could have some diversity with my High Rakers, I guess. Then they have a 76 Caprice. Matchbox tried to do this casting last year or the year before, but it's way too small. Then the Motor Max is still spot on with size, accuracy. They did a heck of a job with their castings. So these are pretty desirable now, even the American Graffiti Series. I would say the American Graffiti Series is more desirable because not many people are looking for this lifted chassis. But as you can see, it's kind of just like an extension on the base. I think you could actually knock off the blocks, the extensions, and then use the standard area. It looks like these are glued on there. But yeah, that's something that is hard to find nowadays and pretty valuable. Those Motor Max 71 Impalas and 76 Caprices. And then moving along, another, it's not a, a donk because it's a G-body, but it's one of the lifted suspensions. This is Montezuma, and this was uh, High Rakers from Hot Wheels. They had the 63 Impala, 2000 Monty, and then Montezuma to represent the um, first-gen G-body, I call it, even though they just say one-generation G-body. But the first-gen G-body Monty, 78 to 80. Um... 
Anyways, this is my take on it. I detailed all of the lights and such, and then I took the wheels and tires off a cool one retro entertainment or pop culture, I should say, car, and put them on here because they had those huge wheels in the back and little ones in the front. So it's not such a good wheel donor unless you have two of them. Then you have a set of small diameters and a set of big diameters. So the set of big diameters were great. It came out the Atari one, and the Atari one was for Centipede, and it had green wall tires, so this just worked out fantastic for this build. So, looks pretty cool. This is from Hot Wheels. This is kind of like um, the big wheel trend. The car's still slammed on the ground, but it has like 20s or 22s on it. That is okay. I prefer it better than the lifted suspension. Um, then... This is from Hot Wheels, I forget, like Boulevard Bruiser series, something like that. But they labeled all of them as 64 Chevys. These are 63s. Even on the base, it says 63 Chevy Impala, but the packages say 64. So if you have those, it's not an error. They just screwed up all the packages. They did a lot of mistakes or made a lot of mistakes in that series. Like the Ford Thunderbolts, they were calling Ford Mustangs and so forth. So um, if you have one that's correct, that would be the error so that's the thing with those um now moving along this is the 63 chevy i forgot to show you guys this 63 impala from ravel also cool functioning suspension opening deck lid with the pumps and batteries pretty cool then i showed you the 61 if you finagle the suspension and opening deck lid batteries, pumps, so forth. Now the Hot Wheels, <clears throat> Monty, that I took out of the picture earlier. This is cool. This is the same base kind of thing that the new RLC one has. But you used to be able to get them at the stores. They're like pivot balls, as you can see, inserted. That's why the Hot Wheels, when you got them jacked up in the air and stuff, they don't look so good because they have this big, bulky thing here and it takes the whole cross member the bottom of the engine everything with it this takes the whole exhaust in the back so it's not so good it, it for chassis detail and it puts everything too far into the center so not bad um but it's it's still um still cool to be able to have adjustable suspension and from the side it does look cool like in three-wheel motion so up uh, you can't even see it. <laughs> so there, like that in three-wheel motion. So it does pretty good from the side view. Um, and it's a lot more durable than the Ravel stuff. The Ravel stuff is very fragile. Had to be careful. So moving over to the side here in our last row of vehicles. So this is just to re represent the trucking culture, lowrider culture. So here is another one that would have been from the early 2000s. Slammed Suburban, probably Air Ride with big diameter wheels. This is from Jada's Dub Series. These are relatively easy to find, I think, still. I'm not sure how much they're going for nowadays. But um, pretty nice casting. Pretty much true to scale, too, for a bourbon. Then this is Hot Wheels 100%. Love this casting, and it's a beautifully done and it does have a fifth wheel hidden under the tonneau cover and you can actually use green lights trailer perfectly with these and you can just kind of make your own extension which i've done with a toothpick and i've showed you guys this in past videos but i'll show you again here so kind of just insert that there and then you have your green light gooseneck or fifth well and then it is is also a female end now let me take it off screen to kind of be able to put that in the hole a little better it's tried kind of hard to do that looking through the camera so anyways there you go you get the idea it is both female ends and you can use a toothpick piece of brass to make a double male in and it works perfectly so that's another reason I really dig that casting. So that was from the oil can series, the 100% stuff. There's also a white and like tangerine two-tone paint job one out there too. Now the next one is 
a RLC release. They've done two of these so far. A third one is on the way. I think it says red line something on the side of it. But these have functioning suspension. And you just kind of turn the knob and it raises it. And then you turn it again to lower it. This is the RLC first release of this 69 Chevy C10. Pretty nice looking truck. And uh, they have a turquoise one with a white uh, insert, white top, and then there's the red line one. I think it's red and black, something like that coming up very soon. It may have already been released just recently, but I think it's still to come. Then last but not least, is the mini trucking th scene from the early 90s. This has to be the lowest Hot Wheel that I have. This and the Volvo Amazon Wagon, they are slammed. As you can see, the tires barely go past the chassis. And even the chassis, there's absolutely no detail, or Hot Wheels usually has some kind of detail etched in, so it has some ground clearance. But um, let me try to move a couple, but it does... Oh, once again, got to put the camera where you guys can see it. It doesn't drag. It rolls. But as you can see, you can't even hardly get a piece of paper under that truck. But they do a fantastic job representing the early 90s mini trucking theme. And if you guys remember, there was an S10 that had the convertible top. The top was off of it with the bed full of speakers that was released from Hot Wheels back in the probably late 80s. And the paint job on that truck is exactly the same paint job that's on this one, which is pretty cool. They kind of brought back that theme. That little S10 was released at the height of the mini trucking scene, and now they brought that paint job back to represent on this Nissan hard body. So pretty cool. So guys, this is it for our lowriders. That's all the updates in my collection. And those are the ones that are available. That one you can still find too. The trucks, the Japan stuff. Um, some of these are still uh, yet available, easy to find for decent prices. Some of them are hard to find at very expensive prices if you do find them. Um, but still, if it's what you want, hey, what's money? <laughs> so, yeah, I know. It's hard to come across. So, same here. That's why I don't have all the lowriders by Ravel that I would love to have because those are my favorite. They did the best job with accuracy on scaling, their details, and the adjustable suspension with being still, like, not too bulky. Like, Hot Wheels is very bulky, but as I said, the advantage of the Hot Wheels is it's very, very durable um, compared to the Ravel, as we can see, which is fragile as you can see the front axle is still laying on the ground so it's not so durable but anyways guys this is it for the weekend showcase video hope you enjoyed it i will be back early to midweek next week with once again some new uh, well actually not all new but a couple of very rare mini gt cars that you probably will not see anyone else unbox so I'm bringing those out and a couple of country exclusives, actually one country exclusive and one international release of the Porsche uh, GT2. So we'll be unboxing those two and then I have a couple of very rare uh, exclusives. One's for Toy East and one is for Toys R Us in Japan. We'll take a look at those come midweek next week. Thanks for watching guys. I left an icon here on the left for another showcase video of some trucks and then I left an icon here on the right for you to subscribe if you have not done so yet. Please do that. Turn on your notification bell so you know when I launch a new video and give me a thumbs up and share the video. Thanks for watching.